Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzu7 here again, and welcome to another episode of the Hardcore Iron Man series coming at you here on Sunday. As promised, we are going to be jumping into a couple more quests in this episode, but I also gave a bit of a checkpoint overview of my current stats and what I've been training up, as well as my bank, as we are going to be hitting 300 quest points in this video, so I figured that'd be a good time to do it. Uh, and we also have a little bit of a PVM clip in towards the end, although I mean it's not like high level PVM or anything, but I am starting to get into going for some of those items as you guys will see for the starting you know bits of your account, the low level PVM that still drops some decent items, but mostly we have some quests here at the beginning and uh, in the next episode I've actually got a pretty big surprise for those of you who <laughs> might not know what it is, uh, you'll have to wait and see, but uh, episode 10 should be pretty sweet. Uh, but here we are in episode 9. We're going to jump into the clips starting right now. So first off here we have what you might not recognize is the Dimension of the Damned uh, New Varrock quest area. A uh, bit of an obscure location and um, I'm in the castle here. About to complete I think the second to last part of this quest. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think there's only one part left after this one. Um, and that will be the Curse of Erev bit. I do believe that is the last part. Uh, and I think this is the def Defender of Varrock part. Um, but I could be completely wrong on that. I guess we'll have to wait and see until we get the quest complete. And yes, so Defender of Varrock part of uh, Dimension of Disaster completed. I think I, I might have said Recipe for Disaster earlier, but I could be wrong. Uh, we get a bunch of lamps uh, right there as well as one that we can choose what to use it on. I usually tend to use those on range because training range up from low levels uh, kind of sucks. And we managed to get 51 with that lamp. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we only have one more part of that quest chain or that quest left and that is the curse of arrow so yeah looking forward to getting that eventually um, next up here we are heading back to the rd castle i believe this is to complete uh regicide so we are going to be getting a bit deeper into the uh elf quest line in this episode which is nice to get out of the way uh the early elf quests are really annoying in my opinion i don't like them a whole lot just Getting to, I mean, ever since the lodestone came out, it's obviously been a lot easier since you don't have to traverse the underground pass more than like basically twice in your account if you get the lodestone. But still, it's an annoying area to navigate. But either way, we get 13.75k agility XP, putting us at 57, and also we now have obviously access to Tyrion Win and that area. Uh, as well as the bit of the Arandar Pass, which is kind of important for a clue scroll if we ever want to get that completed, since we've been having to drop ones like that uh, in the recent past. Next up here, we have one of the stranger quests in the game, and it is a bit of a buggy interface where you can't even see the rocks at point at times that you're shooting at for the quest, but this is going to be Catapult Construction. It's a pretty short and easy one, and we get 15k construction XP out of it, as well as 30 teak planks, although I think we used some planks while we were doing it. I don't remember exactly, but you get 59 construction from that quest, um, and again, it was pretty short and you know not too difficult, just... A bit of annoying uh, shooting those rocks at the end because of the glitch, uh, the visual graphical glitch uh, that it has on it right now. Uh, but I'm sure they'll fix that at some point, right? Shortly. Um, but yeah, once again, we are in the Elven Lands for another quest, and this one is going to be, I believe, Roving Elves. Another one that's kind of annoying, but it's not too bad, just because you have to find them and they can be at two different camps. Um, and this one, you know, is a bit because you have to find them twice or at least twice, I believe, maybe even more than that. But um, it is a bit annoying doing that, although you can uh, world hop a bunch to find them usually pretty easy. But uh, it's still a bit of an annoying part of the quest having to do that. Anyways, we are going to be heading on to the next clip here for this next quest, and that is going to be a little chat with Hazelmere. I believe this one is part of the gnome quest chain. We get quite a few of those out of the way here as well. Um, I believe there's not too many quests before Plague's End on the elf side, just the Morning's End quests, part one and two, I'm pretty sure. Uh, although, oh no, and then also 
within the light, uh, I believe. I think it's within the light because there's within the light and then there's the light within. But I'm pretty sure the light within is the, the harder version. We need like 80 base stats pretty much. Uh, but this one we complete the Path of Glue Free, 5k magic, 30k strength, and 20k slayer as well as 5k thieving. Not too bad on the XP front there, giving us 50, uh, 61 strength as well as 57 slayer. So, yeah, not too bad at all for sure. You definitely get a decent XP reward from that. And the no, I mean, just in general, the gnome quests seem to be quite rewarding in terms of their XP. As you guys will see, uh, I believe in the next clip after this one, I do another one of those quests. But this one is actually going to be um, in the desert here in Sofanem. I think this is contact. Oh no, this is dealing with Scabaris. Okay, yeah. This quest was a bit annoying. Uh, getting through that puzzle bit. Oh my god, it took me so long. I'm pretty sure that's this quest where you fall off that like pipe. I fell off it probably like 15 times. It was so fucking annoying having to do that. The fail rate is ridiculous on that thing. It took me forever. But we got that done. And I, after this, I actually went and did all the Scabarite notes, which took me a long ass time because their drop rate is very weird. Uh, but finish that off for Master Quest Cape as well. Next clip here though is going to be Livecom and it's for one of those gnome quests. We're about to finish up another quest here which actually required me to do a decent bit of skilling to um, get the requirements for. So I'm getting into some of the mid-higher level quests that are actually having some decent requirements and this one is Prisoner of Glue Free. It's actually a pretty easy quest to complete in itself but the requirements were, let me see, 64 agility, which is a pain, 62 construction, 61 runecrafting, which I had to get like 20 levels for, and 64 thieving, and I also have safe cracking unlocked now thanks to that. Um, so yeah, got a lot of stuff for this quest, but it is a very nice quest to get done because the rewards are actually pretty crazy for the how easy completing the actual quest itself is. Uh, so we get... 60,000 thieving and agility XP, as well as 50,000 construction and 45,000 rune crafting. So, really, really good um, uh, XP overall for the quest. So, I will definitely take that. A bit longer cutscenes than I was expecting here at the end, but we are about to finish it up. This is the last one of the cutscenes. I don't have to talk to anyone else. This should be the quest complete after it is over. Uh, I've always thought the gnome quest chain was a bit weird like with all the terror birds and stuff that are like walking around but there we have it so 215,000 XP overall and very very nice XP rewards I'll definitely or I mean I'm sure I'll get some levels okay I got a level in all of the skills so we got 65 agility which is actually very nice because now we can train in the empty throne room uh, don't have to do Ape Atoll anymore we got 63 rune crafting. Um, I was 62. I got one level higher than required. Um, 63 construction and 65 thieving. So yeah, pretty freaking sweet there. We uh, are de that's definitely uh, more XP than I was expecting. Like I didn't look at the quest reward until I was doing it, and I was like, damn, that is a lot of XP, and it didn't take too long to complete either. Um, the next quest we're gonna do though is gonna be Fairy Tale Part Two, so we can unlock fairy rings and stuff, and just. I'm going to do Fairy Tale Part 2 and Part 3 pretty close together just to finish off that quest chain. But yeah, I'll see you guys for the next clip. The next clip we have here for the video is going to be us finishing off the Fairy Tale Part 2 quest. And the next clip after this is actually the Part 3. So getting the Fairy Tale quest out of the way here. Um, obviously, I, I actually complete or started this quest quite a while ago just to unlock the ability to use the fairy rings, but now we're going through and finishing them off. Uh, bit of a strange little trio of quests here, especially the final quest. I don't really like that much, but this one's pretty decent, although you don't get too much great XP from it, really. We now have you know full access to the fairy ring network, although you get that pretty early on in the quest. Uh, so nothing too exciting, uh, but now we're at the uh, 299 quest points so the next clip is going to be the one I talked about earlier where we go over the bank and the stats and what we've been training up and stuff like that uh, and then after that we'll have one final clip okay we are about to hand in the final quest in the fairy chain here which is part three uh, the orcs rift by talking to Martin here I don't even know why you have to talk to him because he's not actually involved in this specific quest but we get two quest points, 11k in farming, thieving, and magic, and then 1k in summoning and crafting. 
Conveniently, you, I no longer need to use a Draymon Staff for Fairy Rings, although I don't really use them that much. And the Magic Watering Can is nice to get for the ability, you know, for making your trees, saplings, and stuff. Put that on my tool belt. Let me get rid of all this other garbage. Um, but yeah, that's a good quest to get done. We uh, got 66 thieving as a result of that as well. And that actually puts us over 300 quest points. So I can now get another full uh, line of the upgrades in the quest point shop. I think I might go for the lore hound for the master quest cape stuff that I want to get out of the way, but I'm not 100% sure. I could also go for the bank there, but I figured this would be a good time because I just got 300 quest points to do a little bit of like a, you know, a checkpoint kind of clip. I haven't really gone over, you know, my current goals or like, you know, the stats I've been getting up. I haven't really been making clips for, which I'll probably start doing in the future here. But let's go ahead and claim our magical dice first of all. This is our last tier 3 magical dice, so after this we'll be getting the tier 4 elite ones. And I think those give you like 2.5 mil each or something, but let's go ahead and roll it here, see what we can get. And we managed to pick up a pretty bad one, blue dehyde chaps, gold trimmed, uh, so yeah, not too good. But still the 1 mil, always nice. Unfortunately we didn't manage to get a barrows or shadow die from any of our magical dice, but you know, you like to see the, um, the cash rolling in. So. Yeah, I don't really think that any of these ones are really worth wasting my time on, so I'll probably go for the Lore Hound just for that uh, that extra chance at getting the... Um, can I just unlock this straight up? Yes, I can. So I might as well just do that to uh, get the better drop chance on some of those lore-related drops for Master Quest Cape. But yeah, um, I will, I guess, quickly run to the bank to show off other things in there. But as far as my stats go, I did recently hit 1,600 total level and 20 mil total XP. This means I can buy my second extra life, but it costs 10 mil, so I don't want to waste a lot of money on it right now, especially because I already have one extra life. So getting a second one, there's almost no point to even getting the second one until I lose the first one, if that makes sense. Like, I'll probably just buy it eventually anyways, even if I don't die, but still like it's definitely not worth me getting right now when that money could be put to much better use with some, on something like construction or summoning uh, by the way let me just turn in this challenge okay hold on I don't want her to take any of this stuff I'm also going to talk about this stuff but I don't want her to take any of that so I'm just going to drop it here let's see Phoenix Rebirth oh my god 44,000 fire making XP and we smith some oracle come very nice so we got two fire making levels from that which is pretty wild and one smithing level which puts us to 62 smithing and 59 fire making so wow that phoenix rebirth gave a lot of xp um, i did that for one of the master quest cape requirements and i didn't even know i had a daily challenge for it but it was nice to get out of the way um but yeah you guys can see here, i actually have this full oracle come plus three besides the gloves but I have the bars for that in the metal bank. I just need to go and do it. So I have been doing like mining and smithing when I'm doing my AFK. Whoops, I didn't mean to eat that. So I'm currently 67, basically 68 mining and 62 smithing. I do like the mining a lot more than the smithing, to be honest. Smithing is really, really slow. Um, at least on Iron Man, because you have to make everything yourself. And it's really annoying when your stuff starts at zero heat. It's nice when you get that unlock for the tier you're at for it to start at 100% heat. But that's not until like the higher levels of that tier, like not until when is it? Um, hmm. Oh, okay, it's only at 65, so, oh wait, no, 63 even. Oh, wow, that's much lower than I thought it was. Okay, so I only need one more level for that, but uh, still it's much slower, but and you need way more bars for the smithing than you get from the mining like once I get 70 mining I won't have nearly enough bars to get 70 smithing so I'll have to do more of the lower tiered ores so I currently have 170 or calcum bars left uh, and 45 dracolith so I don't really have the uh, I don't have anywhere nearly enough to get me to 67 smithing that's for sure but regardless uh, I, I do that a bit in my spare time so I'm gonna be getting that up slowly over time. I, I do enjoy doing it. It's fun to get like a new pick on this account and add it to my tool belt. Um, obviously I currently have the Oracalcum pick plus three on the tool belt here. Um, but yeah, definitely enjoying doing that. And uh, I also got 70 defense uh, recently. I don't know if I mentioned that, but that was nice to pick up and I'll probably 
try to do some barrows pretty soon. I don't know. I, I kind of want to go for uh, branches before too long, but I'm not sure how much longer it'll be before I'm at that level. I do have my kingdom going, so I will get those logs for fletching. And I also have been, I made a, some dart tips when I was training my smithing up, so I have 10k rune dart tips that I could make into darts uh, for some fletching XP. I've also had two uh, metamorphic geodes. One I got an animal crystal from, which is okay. And then the other one I got my coin, a coin, which was elk for one mil, which I was pretty happy with. No onyx, unfortunately, but yeah, other things that I've done. <clears throat> I mean, I've gotten a lot of skills up to 60 for quests, including thieving, which I talked about, I think, room crafting for <clears throat> Path of Glue Free or Prisoner of Glue Free. Um, Let's see what else. I got 61 Herblore from XP rewards mostly, 63 construction, and just generally my stats are getting pretty decent here. We're pretty close to base 60s aside from like Dungeoneering is something I haven't done much at all. We have base 50s outside of that, but then there's just a few skills below 60 that I do need to get up. As far as stuff in the bank, I mean nothing's really that's great, that great in here. I just have my uh, my quest stuff honestly piling up in here for the most part. Um, I do have the uh, a couple of skill outfits that I've been getting. I've gotten four out of five pieces of the nimble outfit from doing agility. I don't know if I mentioned when I got the sous chef's outfit from Gnome Restaurant, but I got that as well. But that was a little bit ago. Obviously, I still have the full fishing outfit. I have the full divination outfit. Um, I'm slowly doing some cabbage face punch bonanza, working on the farming outfit. Uh, it's just nice to try and get those um, for fun, kind of, and I just like to have them for when I'm training. Makes me feel like, uh, you know, it's not wasting any time. Um, also, I have a Dagonauts task right now. I went and killed some Rex just for a Slayer level that I needed for a quest, but I'll probably kill some more Rex for the D Hatchet once I need to train some woodcutting, so I'll probably have a clip for that when I get it. Um, skilling stuff, nothing too special in here, really. Um, don't think there's anything to mention, but I figured I'd just give a run through. Um, I'm doing clues every now and then. I really, I have to destroy quite a few of them because of some emote items I don't have. Um, but I'll open these when I get, like, I don't know, maybe 10, 20, not sure. Uh, nothing to talk about in there. Or there. Or there. Farming, I'm actually doing a lot of player-owned farm. Um, I finally got my shiny rabbit, so I have the full rabbit collection completed. The... Jacko, Jacko Rabbit or whatever the heck it's called. Um, I need to finish farming my Renars and do the Quorms as well because I recently got the level for that. Um, but because I got the um, I got the what's it called? Can't think of it. The large pen from 60 Construction. Um, it allowed me to build, uh, get some cows going on the farm as well. So probably going to start going for those. I'm also just for the beans and I'm also breeding for chickens for the log so yeah I just have the rabbits done now which was nice to get out of the way and I'm just doing sheep and cows for beans passively but yeah that's a bit of a long clip but I wanted to do a bit of a checkpoint here as we hit 300 quest points and going forward what we're looking to do I'm still going to be working on quests for the most part um, although pretty soon like I said we're probably going to be hitting up some racks for the D hatchet and then maybe some barrows and zami god wars once we get um, a lot, uh, you know, some of, the, some of these other quests out of the way. There's really not a whole lot of quests left here, uh, and we're starting to get to the quests that are mostly only high level. Obviously, I have some really easy ones left, like that new one that just came out, and then I think I have like Sheep Share that I still haven't done in here, Sheep Herder rather, but still, some of these are going to be, uh, a lot, most of these quests are going to start being a bit tougher, but looking forward to continuing it on, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next clip. For the final clip of the video, you guys, we are actually here at the Dagonoth King. So like I mentioned in the last clip, I have been killing them a bit for this Dagonoth Slayer task that I am on. And I'm just doing Rex only. Uh, you can still safe spot him since the arena rework. Uh, or I mean, it wouldn't even be that big a deal if I couldn't safe spot him. But you can at the very least still hide from the other two and not be attacked, uh, which is the most important thing. So I have been doing that a bit and will continue to do it. Until I can get my D hatchet at the very least, um, but we do have one clip here 
for this kill uh, where we are unfortunately going to be receiving as you will see here in a second a warrior ring so that kind of sucks um, not really that great I don't think it's even better than my asylum doctor's ring I'm not sure though uh, exactly if it is or not but definitely not what we're looking for yeah only 13 or 17 strength bonus is the only stat it gives so unfortunate to get that not what we're looking for at all from Rex but Hopefully we can manage to get that dehatchet before the end of our uh, Slayer task at the very least. That would be nice to finish off. Um, but yeah, definitely pretty nice to be getting into some of the, like I said, very low level PVM. But it's definitely worth doing some Dagonoth Kings to get that dehatchet early on before it, uh, you know, while you're training up your woodcutting to, at the very least, you need 75 to get into that Elf City before you can get that Crystal Hatchet. So it is pretty important to get that, and you obviously need the D-Hatchet to turn it into a Crystal Hatchet in the end. Um, one thing that's kind of weird about Dagonoth Kings is, like, the Spinal Lips inside instances are super glitchy, and they, like, tend to just stop spawning after, like, maybe 10 minutes or so. Um, and they really fucked up with that new arena. <clears throat> The spinal lips will be clipped inside of walls, hovering in the air and stuff like that. They just didn't even test it at all, it seems like, with the minions, just with the bosses themselves. But what are you going to do? Jagex being Jagex, as per usual. Anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of this episode of the Hardcore Iron Man Progress series. Like I said, in the next episode, which will be episode 10, I have a bit of a surprise for you guys that you might not expect. Um, and it's, I mean, it's not like this epic thing or anything like that, but it's just something I've been working on for quite a bit now. Uh, so I hope you guys will look forward to that. That episode should probably be out within the next week or two at some point. I'm not 100% sure how long it's going to take me to actually finish this, but should be done before too too long and if I don't get it done by like next weekend actually I'll probably just you know upload it anyway and talk about the goal and what I was you know how close I got I am to finishing it and stuff like that um, obviously tomorrow we have our weekly Monday update video I think tomorrow is mm, I think it's actually a patch week tomorrow um, I'm not 100% sure I don't remember exactly from the the month ahead from March. I think it is maybe a patch week tomorrow and then the fire making and in oh no wait actually I think the fire making things are tomorrow on the 18th yeah yeah so that'll be pretty cool I'm looking forward to seeing those come out although we kind of already know all the details I'll go more into I guess detail of what they all do and what I think is going to be useful in that video tomorrow so I'll see you guys then thanks for checking out the video peace out